Welcome to Silence Kills. We'll be discussing scientific evidence for a creator and other controversial top hits. Here's our hosts, Tom Taylor, Steve Bentley, and Simpliamy. The third thing that we want to talk about when we're talking about scientific principles um, is this, this t- word called abiogenesis, which simply is the study of how life came from non-life. Now, I've dug into it. I mean, you guys have probably dug into it. From what I can see, there is zero evidence or explanation given to how life could have arrived from non-life. But this is, this is considered a given in evolutionary theory. But the fact is evolutionary theory doesn't really want to address the situation or the question. They want to just dive right into we have life. Now, how did life evolve? No, they, they, kinda, have, they have faith. That it just started from nothing, and then they go from there. But they don't want to explain the probably the one, the more important question is how do we get life in the first place? Um, there's been lots of experiments done over the years. Probably the one that's in our textbook that we, we remember the most is this Yuri Miller experiment, where they where they hooked up all these these beakers and tubes and hydrogen, all these different chemicals and electricity, and they ran this 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 chemical through to try to see if they could get amino acids, and they got some amino acids. Okay, there's there's been a lot of people that think this was a very successful experiment, <laughs> but th- there's a lot of problems with it. To one, we're not going to get into. But the whole issue is, is if you have amino acids, you are so far from life. It's not even funny. Amino acids are building blocks for proteins. Proteins are building blocks for life. You're not even to a protein molecule yet. So you're light years away, even if you can get amino acids. I mean, we all have to admit, we're all, we're all made of chemicals to start with. There's chemicals everywhere in the universe. You know, we got the periodic t- table that shows us all the different chemical elements. So nobody's going to argue that you could come up with perhaps some amino acids, but with some experiments. But life, that's a whole different ball game. I always heard this idea of let's forget these experiments for trying to get amino acids. How about I just give you a cell? I'll give you a living live cell. The only thing you got to do is you got to poke it with a needle and dump all the contents into a beaker or whatever you want to do. And you have everything. You have all the protein molecules. You have DNA. You have everything you need for life. But scientists will never put Humpty Dumpty back together again right? That cell is not going to come back to life. We can't do it. So the fact that they want to believe that life came from non-life, which is not science, which is not repeatable, which is not observable, which is not, which is knowledge, it's not knowledgeable, it's not reasonable to think that life can come from non-life when there's no evidence to support it. Now, if you believe in a creator God, he is the giver of life. He created life. This is what we believe on faith. But again, if you believe life came from non-life, you have a tremendous amount of faith that is not supported by anything. Well, you know, the, one of the things I like to touch on that too is that in that experiment, you you finally got some amino acids, and um, that took tremendous amount of expense, effort, designing, planning, creating, intelligence. working, intelligence. To make a couple amino acids and so you're actually only helping to pr- yes. prove design theory when you do that that you know our, our best efforts we still weren't I, I love there's a story it says that the scientists did finally get that figured out and they got the amino acids and the proteins and they were able to finally create some life and and they were like you know what we can make a man and they said you know what god we don't need you we can make man ourselves. god said all right we'll have a little competition i'll make a man you make a man and let's see you know who really knows what's going on and so god scoops up some dirt and the scientists scoop up some dirt, and God says, well, wait a minute, get your own dirt. Get your own dirt. Look what I got. I got a jar of dirt. I got a jar of dirt. And guess what's inside it? <laughs> that one. So it doesn't matter how far you can carry that. Yeah. You're, you're still a designer, and you're still using the elements you were given. You know, where those come from, it comes back to that, that other question. But you, you look at this, it's... it's uh, very well accepted that that only life produces life. I mean, it's very well accepted, and they it, it, there's a faith leap that's taken that they want to say, well, life had to come from somewhere, but we know it didn't come from God. Therefore, right. life 
had to at some point spontaneously light, lightning struck the soup in the mud and, and, and a bacteria formed, you know, something right. happened. And, um, and I love that, you know, there's a far side cartoon and it shows them doing all the formulas and, and then it says something happened and then it has all the rest of the formulas, you know, and there's always that something happened yeah, right. when you, right. when you're dealing with the foundation of the universe to the foundation of life, there's always that something happened. <laughs> we don't know what we'll eventually figure it out. Right. It definitely wasn't God. It was not a God, <laughs> it, you know, and, and that's that's their faith premise. They have a strong faith that there is no God. And so when we start looking at this, that's not very reasonable with the evidence that you found. Mm-hmm. Everything we find leads us further and further down. And there's actually been a wave, and they, they made a movie, um, uh, I think it was called Expelled. Yeah. And, um, and one of the things we're trying to highlight is there's been a strong movement in the scientific community as we understand our world better towards faith, towards deism and theism, and even towards Christianity as they start to look at a more and more reasonable faith and they start digging into it. But it's very buried because it's not okay to demonstrate that. And you will be blacklisted. You'll be expelled right. when you start talking about faith in a God when you're dealing with science. And so it's it's really, it has led to a lot of people changing. We've seen that. You know, I love that some of our great apologists have come from searching for truth wherever right. the truth might take us. That That's kind of called science. Yeah. And when they start doing that, they're like, oh man, the most reasonable thing is there is a God. And as you dig into who God is, the most reasonable faith system comes down to the, the, the God of Christianity because it actually lines up with human experience and what's right. observable rather right. than these pie in the sky theories. So, Great God. And I, that takes us off track a little bit from the abiogenesis, but it's still. No, you know, and I'm going to go back to when you were talking about that scientists have done all these different things to try to create life. They've, they've poured in so much intelligence. Let's, let's just say the hypothetical that they did create life one day. What they did prove is that it takes tremendous amount of intelligence to create life. Yeah. Which, if if you show me when the after the Big Bang theory, where is their intelligence there that could have created life outside and, of a guy? It's something we had talked about earlier. Is what we we've, we've been seeing a trend of is evolutionary scientists um, pushing pushing it back now going they there is not enough time for there to have been any likelihood statistically for life to have occurred on its own on earth and so now they've got theories from aliens seeding the planet to um a meteor rock that you know blasted out a volcano had a bacteria on some other planet that had more time to develop life that landed on earth and and that's where life came from and and it's kind of that something happened thing is always this formula of let's make more time let's make more time you can see that in history of science when you start back with tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, and millions of years, and then billions of years, and they keep just pushing it back, but you still haven't answered the question. Right. And where did life come from? Well, the whole theory of with enough time and chance, anything is possible really is, is a poor theory. Okay? I mean, there's some simple simple uh, illustrations given. If, if we take a watch and we take all the parts out and we put them in a coffee can and we shake this coffee can for a million years... Will the watch ever reassemble itself? It's not going to assemble itself back into a watch. And that's just a few little parts we're talking about in a watch. And you know what it'll do is what the second law was. <laughs> it'll it'll break actually down. break down into smaller and smaller parts right. so it gets back to its core elements. <laughs> that's what'll happen. Things aren't going to organize. So now we're back to that second law. You know, yeah. go ahead, Sim. <laughs> no, I'm just enjoying uh, you guys talking. As uh, Just to be honest with the viewers, I haven't looked into, what was it, bio? A-biogenesis. A-biogenesis. Yeah, I haven't looked into that, so I'm not even going to try to even touch on that. But common sense, uh, reason, I mean, life came from nothing. That's just, I'm not trying to offend anybody. Uh, that's just nonsense. You know, we have five senses for a reason, to sh- to use it for reason. You know, if I touch something that's been on the stove for a while, the pan, oh, that's hot. You know, I, I don't automatically uh, think, oh, that's cold. No, my whole body is set up with the five senses to cause reasonable thinking to happen so I don't kill myself or other people <laughs> around me. Yeah. You know, so when it comes to all these laws of physics, laws of science, there's reason behind it. And for someone to say, uh, well, I don't believe that there is a God. Uh, you know, or a creator. I just believe it just showed up. I mean, it, 
just humble yourself, you know, just humble yourself. Stop, stop being prideful, you know, admit uh, there is a creator. I mean, you don't treat your life like that every day. You never show up to get in your car and say, hey, honey, if you're married, hey, honey, the, there's a vehicle just popped up in the, in the garage. That's amazing. I mean, if that, if that was the case, I want a Ferrari. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, scientific laws, you can prove it in front of you every single time. Well, you're trying to say this thing happened once or twice, and that's it. That's, you know, it might happen another gazillion years. That's nonsense. 